What's up Speedway memes? We're down here with the one and only Mr. Spectacular, Matty O'Brien. Matthew, uh, we're down here to have a chat with you, mate. Um, so tell us about yourself a little bit. What's uh, your history and your family's history with racing? Yeah, well I guess um, our family history is pretty deep in Speedway. We go back, well I go back sort of three generations. Uh, my dad and my granddad both drove uh, speed cars and super mods. So, uh, yeah, I basically grew up at Claremont Speedway and, um, yeah, grew up around, you know, midgets and um, that's basically all I wanted to do my entire life was to drive speed cars. But, uh, you know, with the, with the cost and um, just certain situations, unfortunately, that never panned out uh, the way I would have liked it to. But um, never mind, we still plugged away and um, sort of actually raced junior sidecars with my younger brother uh, for a few seasons. Uh, started out at Bibble Lake Speedway and then when that got shut down we obviously moved out to Pinjar Park. And um, yeah, I think we ran four, three or four seasons between the ages when I was 12 to 16, which is obviously the age limit for juniors. Um, so yeah, we did that for those four seasons and had a lot of success, um, which, was, which was really fun. Um, yeah, we didn't have a huge amount of competition over here with the amount of bikes, but you, know, you can only beat who they put out on the track against you. So um, that was really fun. And then uh, turned 16, obviously too old for juniors and financially we just couldn't afford to go the senior sidecar route. Um, so I sort of stepped away from the driver's seat for a few years and actually started doing commentating and actually got my Cert 4 in um, broadcasting uh, at TAFE uh, after I left school. And yeah, actually did the commentary at uh, Pinjar Park Speedway for a lot of the big meetings. Uh, I did the first probably three, two or three at least, uh, Wolfie Memorial meetings and you know, Dennis Nash Carp and all those things. Actually did a few meetings over at Barbagello for the historic motorbikes as well. So um, yeah, that was really fun. I enjoyed you know, broadcasting or commentating, I guess, from a Speedway point of view or racing point of view. Um, grew up listening to you know Wade Oranger and uh, Con Migro over in Claremont days, and obviously you know very uh, unique voices, the both of them, and um, cadence the, the way they commentate. And I, I was a big sponge, obviously, in my early years, and a lot of learnt, you know learnt a lot from them, and sort of yeah carried a lot of that through to my commentating. So um, yeah, that was I did that for a couple of years, and and then um, I, not being behind the wheel and racing myself was, I'm so passionate about it and wanting to do it that it was actually quite painful to not be in a position to do it. So I made the decision to, to kind of step away from uh, motorsport altogether for a little while. Um, as far as, you know, going to race meetings, I still watch some stuff on TV, you know, MotoGP and Formula One and IndyCar and things. But um, yeah, I had to sort of step away from Speedway for a little while because, like I said, I yeah, it was it was almost too painful for me to go to the meetings and, and not be involved. So um, yeah, that sort of took me, you know, took me away from the sport for a little while. But in the time that I was away from the sport, I actually um, started delving deeper into my other passion, which is um, boxing. And um, yeah, spent a good five six years training. Um, you know, sort of six, seven days a week, and that helped me lose a lot of weight. And uh, yeah, got me a lot fitter and ended up actually having a couple of fights. Uh, and that was a really good experience, obviously not motorsport related, but um, you know, motorsport's a very tough sport and uh, I don't think there's a tougher sport than boxing or, or you know, any kind of martial arts really. So that was really good um, to, you know, branch out and um, go and do something that I sort of um, had also wanted to do, but was again never physically in a position to do because I was quite uh, quite overweight. So yeah, that um, sort of reinvigorated me, I guess. And uh, when I realized that um, my run in boxing had sort of come to an end, um, you know, all that, that constant training, uh, I decided that um, I, I really wanted to go racing again. And um, I obviously spent a lot of time around the racetracks, so I started to spend a lot more time around the Speedway. Um, my cousin, uh, Jimmy Fleming, obviously raced speed cars as well. Uh, his son now, Keenan Fleming, is racing speed cars. So um, yeah, I go down and obviously, you know, was going down to support them and um, yeah, sort of cheer them on. And um, when you're around, uh, that sort of group of people, like-minded people, you, you start having conversations with people and um, 
meeting new people because I'd been away from the sport for a couple of years and um, yeah, started developing some really good relationships. Um, one of them was actually with um, young Jack Williamson um, and that all actually sort of came about um, when I decided to go dirt car racing. It was, you know, the I guess the, the cheapest form of motorsport. Um, so yeah, we, um, we sort of, I actually purchased the car off my younger brother. Uh, he'd bought it and it had been sitting there for a couple of years. He hadn't done anything with it. So I bought that off of him, really not knowing much about the chassis or anything. And um, as it turns out, it's uh, it was an old Benson chassis, which is, um, I guess, quite rare these days. And um, yeah, we um, went racing dirt carts. And um, that, as soon as I did that, the first day I sat back in the wheel and we got out there. I didn't do any practice, any test runs, no nothing. Just went straight out into a race off the back of the field. And, um, you know, eight, six lap heat, whatever it was, came back in and... I uh, was smiling like a Cheshire cat, mate, for probably the next two weeks until the next meeting, and, and that was it. Um, I, I was, I was back, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to go anywhere after that point. And from that point onwards, it's just been really from dirt carts has just been working myself um, step by step, goal by goal, um, towards getting back to the speedway, which, um, which we, which we accomplished at the end of last uh, last season. I have. Uh, Obviously got a 4.7 Outlaw Kart chassis from Trevor Reynolds of 4.7 uh, Motorsport. Um, he put that car together for me. Um, it was, I guess, a bit of a sort of a throw together. It was, you know, a, a second-hand chassis, still straight and everything. And, um, yeah, we just put new panels and he sort of, you know, sort of threw. We, we, we put it together basically as a budget car. And, um, yeah, we ended up doing two, three, three meetings at the end of last season. Um, just to sort of dip our feet and get, get our feet wet once the car was ready. And then unfortunately, just as we were getting a roll on, it was the end of the season and we had to sort of park it up for a couple of months until the new season rolled around. Um, yeah, and then uh, this season, which is the season we're speaking of, uh, unfortunately hasn't gone the way that we had planned at the start of the year, that's for sure. Um, you, you're well aware, you've been there for all of them, you've seen what's happened, but I guess for those who haven't, done four meetings this season um, we've blown up two motors and had two decent rollovers so we've torn up a fair bit of equipment um, haven't finished a show this season which is really hard to take um, but we're on the mend at the moment we've sort of um, we um, we sort of run out of funds you know the current economic climate the way it is um, when you have four of those fairly decent sort of spills or incidents that, you know, all cost a fair bit of money. I know it's not a lot, it's not a lot of money to some, but, um, you know, a lot of people say they're a low budget team. Well, I've seen what they've got. If they're a low budget team, I like to think that we're a no budget team. So, um, yeah, but we're, we're slowly putting it back together. I've, um, you know, just got a new rear end there and um, getting that all together. And Trevor Reynolds is building me another wing because, uh, yeah, the, the one that we rolled over last time at uh, Pinjar is unfortunately uh, beyond repair or beyond saving. So, yeah, we're, we're slowly getting things built back together and um, hoping that we will be ready for the meeting in March. Um, I would That's what we're targeting at this stage, that, that meeting back in March at Pinjar. Yeah, so it's lucky that you guys have got plenty of time to prepare for that meeting in March. Um, a little bit of a long break since uh, the last race, which was way back on the uh, the twenty eighth, no, the thirtieth of uh, December. The speedweights, yeah. yeah which... And uh, you didn't participate in either because of uh, having to wait for damage to be fixed. Yeah, yeah. It, it was um, it was one of those things where unfortunately the incident happened. I think literally the week before the speedweights run started. Um, so as soon as that happened, and we realised what we'd hurt and what we'd bent. Um, yeah it was it was heartbreaking because I, I was I was really looking forward to getting on a consistent run and you know putting in four race meetings sort of back to back within a 10 day period or whatever it was um, I was really looking forward to that but uh, unfortunately it wasn't to be that's motorsport it wasn't to be but it was hard to take um, because we were really looking forward to it we were, we were super excited so it was, it was gutting all right now let's go back to your karting days real quick which you quickly touched on 
Uh, what makes that car really tick? I mean, you said it's a fairly rare chassis these days. Just um, old, I guess, probably more than rare, but that's anything old like that, you know, they get bent and, and broken and um, sometimes it'd be on repair, but this bad boy's still straight. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a raw form of motorsport, you know, you literally just a, a, a chassis, you bolt a 100 cylinder Yamaha KT motor on it. It's got some, a, you know, fiberglass seat with four bolts, um, some side pods and a couple of tie rods, and you can pretty much go racing, you know, there's not much to them. They're really, really simple, but they are a lot of fun. I know, what was your highlight from doing the, uh, the carts there? Well, we ran, I ran aid carts. I mean, we're still, um, now that Dirt Trackers is coming back on board and it's only 15 minutes down the road, we, that thing's gonna come out of the shed and definitely get run again. But we ran for about three seasons. My highlight was actually probably the Wajin, uh, no, sorry, I think it was the Great Southern Slam that I ran. Uh, I actually drove, um, I actually drove for Lee and Shane Austin and the Austin family. Um, Lee had hurt himself and was unable to participate in the meeting. Um, yeah, I, I sort of formed a really good relationship with their whole family. Um, Lee's obviously a racing speed car as well, so he was kind enough to offer me the opportunity, uh, offer me the opportunity to drive his car, um, which was obviously a hundred open, um, which I have driven before. I, I had a hundred open motor, but again, it was an old air-cooled motor couldn't compete with these newer motors which is exactly what they had and, um, I had a blast that was awesome um, we went out I'd never sat in the cart and we went out and time trial fourth quick I think from memory out of 40 of the best carts in, uh, in Australia so um, yeah that was that was probably the highlight um, another one that stands out was the first meeting up at Jenna Cabine for the season. Um, we just had the motor rebuilt and went all the way through the cart and freshened it right up. And we took it out to Jenna Cabine and run KT mediums and we won five from five and clean swept the day. Um, didn't matter where we started in the field, we were able to just chew through them and get up to the front and sort of disappear. So that was a day that I'll never forget because the thing was just on rails. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything, you know, wrong I was driving in harder than I probably should have and the thing was just sticking and was just railing around there so and um, that was another one that really stands out all right now let's start talking about your outlaw cart here now um, it's a bit of a different beast to your go-kart over there on the wall uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about it and what makes it tick yeah so um, we've got a 4.7 uh, outlaw cart chassis um, with a 2016 Honda CRF on it um, obviously most of the running gear is QRC running gear. Um, yeah, basically, uh, fiberglass was just done by a local guy in Maddington. Uh, and then, yeah, all the bar work and everything was all, um, fabbed by Trevor. So, um, yeah, it's all like stainless steel bumpers and obviously chrome molly chassis, QRC running gear. And, um, yeah, the 2016 Honda. We've also, the, the first motor that we had from last year um, was uh, the old Bujos motor. Um, that was a 2009 Honda. Um, so that's the one that we hurt uh, at the start of this season. So that's currently at the engine builders just kind of sitting there at the moment uh, until we can sort of get the funds together to get that rebuilt. But yeah, other than that, there's not really much, there's not really that much more to them. Um, obviously the, you just got the base chassis with your bolt-on cage um, on top. And yeah, that, that's pretty much there always to them. Um, obviously you can, you know, you, you run different size rims on the left rear to the right rear to give yourself a little bit of stagger, stand the tire up a little bit. Um, you can adjust the, you can adjust obviously the front end, you can wind the spindles up and down to sort of adjust them if you wanted to as well. So there's not a huge amount of adjustment obviously other than that really, because you've got no shock absorbers, you know, you know nothing like that. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. Like I said, I mean, a little bit more complex than the Aidka carts, but realistically, if you um, if you're able to bolt, if you're able to weld some spigots on it and put a cage on an Aidka chassis, it wouldn't be drastically, you know, off being able to do. I know there's been a lot of guys, a lot of the younger kids that actually use Aidka chassis as converted carts to to run the outdoors. So um, yeah, 
very much the same, but also very different. All right, now obviously the cart is in a little bit of disrepair right now. Uh, you've got a little bit of a story of history with getting into incidents with the Outlaw carts. Uh, so let's uh, wind back to last year when uh, I first met you. Yeah. And uh, you had your first race meeting and uh, the first pretty spectacular crash that I saw at Pinjar Park. Yeah, it was a credit to me. Thanks, thanks to me. So, uh, no, yeah, look, that was our debut meeting, first night in the car. Um, everything was rolling pretty good. We, we were just sort of, really, I was just sort of trying to get comfortable in the car and cruise around and, you know, not try and drive over my head, just be nice and sensible. It's the first night out. Um, made it to the feature and, um, yeah, unfortunately, obviously, first night you start off the back. So, um, yeah, on one of the restarts, I was in a position where, unfortunately, um, there was a, a couple of cars that came together going into turn one and the two cars in front of me, um, basically decided to come up track but before they did that I'd already jumped to the outside and was basically on the fence and unfortunately when they decided to obviously try and avoid the crash which they should you know which is the right thing to do unfortunately I was just in the way and it sort of uh, pinned the right front into the uh, into the fence and, and sort of caught right where one of the fence posts is and basically just stopped the car immediately and uh, yeah did a big pirouette in the air and um, luckily at that time we, we were able to land back on all fours but um yeah that was you know welcome to the outlaws um nice big pirouette in the feature race so didn't do too much damage in that one just sort of um bent the front stab axle obviously because it came down really hard because it sort of was basically almost upstanding drag on its tail and then sort of dropped down from there so yeah um, just bent up a, a few little bolt on bits and pieces but that wasn't too bad the first one all right now let's go into this season so far uh, another couple of big incidents, especially uh, the one at the Perth Motorplex, which yeah. is uh, you know, a much higher speed than what we see at Pinjar Park. Um, just tell me what was going through your mind for that one. Uh, oh, bugger. <laughs> uh, look, it, it was one of those deals. Um, nice, big, long straights, fast track. It was my first time running the outlaw car there. I was really loving it. It was a really really heavy track that dumped a lot of water onto it just before we went out uh, and unfortunately I had a problem with vision after basically pulling sort of pulled two or three tear offs and then the next one I went to grab in my haste I grabbed the rest of them and uh, got filled in and um, yeah just running down the back straight and sort of sort of yeah turned into turn three and had fully committed to turn three and um, then there was a couple of guys again that came together and sort of one got spat out the back which i think was kyle francis he just kind of was a innocent party in it and i was already sort of committed to the corner and when i saw him sort of rolling back to where the line i was on i sort of jumped on the brakes and, and turned it hard right towards the fence you can actually see it in the video you see the things like this and then the next frame it's basically full off the opposite direction and i actually hit him with the left with my left rear um to his left rear and basically i was still carrying so much momentum that it basically just sort of hit and, and bounced over to the right rear and i think we actually landed on or very close to the curb between the bike track and the main track and um yeah it just bit in on the right rear with whatever it hit uh, whatever it dug into and then just sort of spat us out from there and we ended up sort of you know quarter track high on the main track on the big track um yeah i think it sort of pirouetted three three and a half times before it sort of come to a stop on its side so that was um that was a decent one just because of the you know the terminal speed that you're carrying at the end of that straightaway um so yeah that was that was a pretty good lick i um sort of banged up the elbow pretty good in that one um wrist restraints are really good for obviously stopping your arms from coming up and out but they don't stop your arms from coming back down and whatever it came down and i sort of hit the uh, hit the inside of my elbow and um yeah that still a little bit tender today actually every now and then if i you know banging on the door on the way out or something it, it's really painful straight away but um it's just one of those things so just you know chuck some ice on it and eat some cement and harden up and get over it all right now let's look at uh your your latest crash um well i don't like focusing on the crashes too much because you know racing's about racing not about the crashes uh you know the best thing is you know most drivers walk away and that's what we love to see 
And um, unfortunately, because of how spectacular your crashes have been, you got the moniker of uh, Mr. Spectacular from myself. Uh, but let's talk about your last crash, um, a little bit of a run-in with uh, another former midget driver, Chris Salenta. Uh, just take us through uh, just that whole meeting and uh, leading up to that incident. Yeah, look, uh, Pinjar Park's obviously very close quarters. Um, it's, it's a tight little bull ring. Um, you know, when you've got these cars on track, everyone's really getting after it and hustling. And it doesn't make, leave much room for error. Um, and unfortunately, um, just with the way that Speedway goes, when everyone's, you know, got the red mist descends and everyone's got the bit between their teeth and they're going after it, they sometimes overdrive a little bit. And um, yeah, unfortunately, we were on the tail end of that domino, basically. Um, someone sort of got together or, or sort of spun out on, uh, on the exit of turn two. And I, um, you know, obviously saw him, jumped on the brakes, sort of pinned the car to the curb. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, it just wasn't quite enough. And again, it just sort of tagged the right rear on the way through. And um, yeah, again, did the almost the opposite to, to the motorplex, hit with the right rear, sort of bounced over to the left rear and then sort of went over onto a side from there. So um, yeah, it was one of those things, just wrong place, wrong time. Um, same as the very first meeting, same as the motorplex meeting, unfortunately, all three incidents. Um, I guess the, the solace that I can take from it is they haven't been sort of, you know, driver error on my part where I've rode a wheel or, or run over someone or run into someone and sort of messed up myself that way. I've just been wrong place, wrong time and tried my darndest to avoid it. But, um, you know, everything happens so quickly as everyone knows, you, you know, there's that split second to, to make those decisions, make those sort of moves. And I've made them, but unfortunately it just, it's, it's that last inch that uh, we haven't been able to get clear. Now it's not all been doom and gloom for you in the outlaw carts. Uh, let's uh, go away from the crashes. Let's talk about some of your highlights from driving the outlaw car. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we realistically, when you look at it, we've only done seven meetings. Um, three at the end of last year and the four this year. Now, the four this year, I haven't finished any. Like I said, we did two motors and two rollovers. So really, the only sort of, I guess, uh, highlight that I can take, there hasn't been any of this season. It's all been the doom and gloom, unfortunately, but we've still got more season to go. Uh, highlight, I guess, would probably be the last, the very last meeting from the end of last season. Um, the yeah, the Mako Mining um, meeting was um, that was a really enjoyable one. Um, didn't have a huge field of cars, um, but still a pretty quality field. And um, yeah, we we showed some really good speed. That was only like I said, our third meeting. Showed some really good car speed, and um, was able to um, yeah, was able to pick up fourth place in the feature race and got a nice novelty check for it. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's always good. That's, you know, they're, they're the kind of nights that I guess you look back on when you do have a bit of a tough run uh, and you sort of just, yes, yeah, sort of go back to those feelings on how you felt after those meetings and, and how you felt when you got out of the car after that and try and hold on to that because, yeah, when it's not going right, it does, um, it does wear on you a little bit, especially when it's, you know, race after race after race, but bad luck can only last so long, I say. All right, now uh, let's just talk about fitness real quick because um, driving the outlaw cars, from what I have noticed as a spectator, can be pretty physical. It looks like it's a one-to-one -one kind of steering ratio. So how, the amount that you turn the wheel is the amount that the wheels turn. Um, so what's that like physically and uh, how do you keep yourself uh, in a good enough shape to uh, be able to drive them? I think it's extremely important. Um, I didn't when I was younger and that's why you you know, there's not many of them, but there is photos of me and it's sitting at about 130 kilos and extremely large um, and not fit. Um, so it, it, it is extremely important. Um, I spend a, a lot of time focusing on my training. I try and get to the gym three or four times a week, try and run a few Ks three or four times a week um, just to try and sort of balance it out. But it is extremely important because especially in these things, you know, you've got no power steering. Like you said, the 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 steering is sort of you know it's it's direct it's one to one you they sit very heavy on the front wheels um when you're going at speed when you're actually at race pace they're, they're not too bad they're really not too bad because you know all a lot of the weights transferred over the back and 
that lightens the front wheels up. Um, there's a couple of other adjustments you can make with, um, you know, with camera and towing and tow out and things like that to sort of make them a little bit better as well. Um, but they're definitely not, uh, they're not the kindest things to the forearms, that's for sure. But yeah, definitely very important um, because, um, yeah, they're, they're a short wheelbase car and they're very twitchy, so you really got to be up on the wheel. All right, now, uh, before we started recording here, we were having a little bit of a chat about iRacing. Um, what's your iRacing career like and uh, what do you like about it? And uh, what do you reckon there's some skills that you can transfer over from iRacing to the real world of racing? Oh, I'm super glad you asked this question, actually. I'm a, a huge fan. Um, I think it's an incredible tool. I, I, there's probably a lot of people who probably don't give much credit to it helping with race car drivers, but I think purely just from a hand, eye, feet, coordination um you know you still turn the steel wheel you're still pressing the throttle um you, you obviously can't feel anything through your butt unless you've got a real good sim rig um but um but i, I think it's a massive help I, I use it a lot um in between race meetings just to try and keep sharp keep the eye in um yeah it, it's just it, it's another tool it can't hurt you know, it, 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 I, I don't see there being any negatives toward it. As far as a career goes, guy, I've only probably had it for about three years. Um, I stick to mainly the fixed official races like we are talking about, um, just because I like it when it's a fixed setup deal because then it really comes down to the individual behind the wheel. Obviously, the sim rig can have a lot to do with it. But, um, but yeah, I, I like that level playing field and it comes down to, uh, it comes down to the nut behind the steering wheel. All right, now uh, let's start talking about your future aspirations here. Um, what, where do you see yourself in five years? And uh, what do you hope to achieve in uh, the near future? Yeah, look, I mean, um, five year goal, I, I would like to still be, I would like to still have the outlaw car, um, but I would prefer my main focus to be driving speed cars. Um, or sprint cars for that matter. I, I'm I'm not one-eyed. Um, I, I love sprint cars as well, whether it be a limited 360, 410, a midget, okay. a late model, a super sedan, a Formula 500, a wingless. I'm down for anything. I, I want to drive anything and everything I can. I just I would take any opportunity that anyone would give me in any car, um, and I would grab it with both hands. I'm so passionate about Speedway. It, burns in you know there's a there's a passion that burns in my stomach i get quite emotional when i talk about speedway it's it's so important to me it's been my entire life it's been in my family for so many years it's all i ever thought that i was going to do you know you look back at all those you know school cards when you're a kid and you write down what you want to be when you grow up every single time without fail mine always said i want to be a speed car driver um that's developed as i've gotten older to just a speedway driver. I just want to drive anything and everything I can get my butt in, really. Um, so yeah, five turn plan, five year plan. I, I would, I would really like to be in a situation where I'm racing in a higher category of, of speedway, without a doubt. Like I said, um, speed cars or sprint cars would be, you know, definitely the the goal for five years. As far as a short term goal. Um, try and make the most of the opportunities that i get with the outlaw cart you know work you know keep working really hard to, to get it back together and on the track um and then once we're good to go there obviously we've got to try and keep it together um we haven't done so well at that at the start of the season but um yeah just just try and get as as many laps in the car as i can um just keep driving hard, keep training hard, keep focusing, keep moving towards it. Um, you know, keep talking to people, keep letting everyone know how, how, how almost desperate I am. You know, to 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 get a drive in other race cars. I'm, like I said, I'm just so passionate about it. it it's it's um, it's like tunnel vision. Um, I can't think of anything else. You know, it's the first thing I think of when I get up in the morning. It's the last thing I think of when I go to bed at night. Um, it's on my mind when I should probably be thinking about work in all honesty, but I, I can't help it. It just, it, it, it burns really deep in me, really deep. All right, now we're about to wrap this up. So um, 
who are some of the people that have helped you along the way that you just want to give a quick shout out to? And uh, while we're at it, we'll also get a shout out for the people who are currently helping you out. Yeah, God, I mean, that list is so long. Um, you know, we, I mean, I would have to start off with my current sponsors, Polylink Piping Systems, A-Steel Powder Coaters, and South, Street, South Street's Pet Supplies. Um, to have those three companies on board means a lot to me. They're all sort of family companies, um, West Australian companies. I'm really proud to, um, you know, to, to, to wear their logo on our race car. Um, and I'm just really proud to have them support our program. Um, to go back through, I guess, the, the history, we've we've never really had sort of many major sponsors, you know, even through the, the sidecar days, Dad did, you know, just majority of it sort of out of his own pocket, and he built all the chassis and stuff. So, uh, you know, a massive thanks obviously has to go to him, you know, he's the reason, he's the, he's the culprit. To, to my passion of speedway, I would say. Um, but I'll never hate him for that. Um, I'll only ever love him for that. So, um, so yeah, thanks to Dad. Obviously, Mum, she's always supported us. Um, you know, she always always rings. She, she doesn't get a chance to make it to a lot of race meetings because she's really busy running her own business. Um, but, yeah, she's always been super supportive. Um, my, my wife, Shireen, she's been unbelievable. We've been together for... Uh, 14 odd years now um and she has supported me and not you know never blinks an eyelid um when we need when we needed to you know look at buying another motor she said yep let's do it let's pull the trigger um when things are bent and they need fixing you'll see her out here with me you know hours on end uh, working on the race car so she's she's a huge support. I, I literally yeah she's I, I couldn't do what I do without her. So I'm massively thankful for her and her support. My younger brother Josh O'Brien, um, he's also when it comes to race cars, he's a workhorse. Um, yeah, he's he's been massive. He's basically my crew chief with the uh, with the outlaw car. So massive shout out to him. And um, yeah, hopefully when we have a sponsors day at the end of the season, maybe I'd like to chuck him and couple of other people in my car to, to sort of thank them and give them the opportunity to have a run around because of all the hard work that they do. Um, yeah, um, there's, there's people that have helped me, you know, just coming down to support or say g'day. Um, David Norman, um, he's, you know, he's spent a, a fair amount of time here helping with, with motor stuff and at the racetrack as well. Um, shout out to him. Uh, he's just had a, 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 a lovely baby, him and his partner, so shout out to them. Um, yeah, um, Kyle Sanders, um, he, you know, got us out of the, out of the grief last meeting uh, and lent us a, a brand new rear axle that he hadn't even taken out of the box. So that was awesome for him. Um, Trevor Reynolds has been massive with helping us with the car, um, not only building it, but, you know, welding bits and pieces and repairs to the chassis. So he's been fantastic. Kyle Bradshaw, um, big Kyle, um, he's He's, um, you know, always down to, to, to uh, help us out of the race meetings and he's almost become like my little sort of driver's offside or he, uh, yeah, helps me when I'm um, getting my gear organised and everything. So he's been massive. I'm super thankful for his support. Um, yeah, God, I just, there's, there's so many people. Um, back to the sidecars day, Jeff Giddos was a, a, a huge influence on us. Um, he basically taught us the ins and outs of, of riding sidecars and like I said we had a lot of success so I owe a lot of that to him um, so massive thanks to yeah, Jeff Giddos um, got this, it, the more I think about it there's just so many people you know um, Jimmy and Mel Fleming from, from A Steel Powder Coaters um, you know through the the, the, the Outlaw the, um, the Acre Chassis the old sidecar chassis, you know, they have always helped us with our powder coating needs. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, the list is so long, you know, you, no one does this or any kind of motorsport on their own. Um, so, yeah, like I said, you couldn't do it without all these people and their help and support. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm just massive, massively appreciative to everyone who's jumped on board and helped us throughout the years. 
um, giving me little tips, you know, um, Sharp and, and the Sharp family um, from uh, Andrew, uh, sorry, yeah, well, Andrew Sharp and Aaron Sharp. Um, you know, they helped us with the Aidka stuff when we first started, and obviously Aaron's now racing a midget as well. So, yeah, that yeah, there's just it's just so many people. You know, Thomas Unwin helping us with our engines on the Aidka stuff. Um, yeah, the, the list can go on. I could probably sit here and thank people for hours on end. To be honest, mate, yeah, it's hard, and, and I'm really sorry if I've missed anyone. There's just so many years of motorsport to try and think back on. And, and there's so many people that have helped you in so many little ways, even if it is, you know, just coming up and giving you a pat on your back after you do have a big dump and making sure you're okay. Um, even those people, you know, um, are hugely important. So. All right, well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to come and invade your space here for a couple of hours. Not a problem. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, hopefully we see you on track for the uh, 4th of March uh, for the next round of the Outlaw Carts at Pinjar Park. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, look, that, that's definitely our plan. That's what we're working towards. Um, I, I don't see any reason why we won't be there, mate. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's been a little bit too long out of the seat as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it and ready to rip in. Thanks for coming down. All right, so hopefully this is the first of many episodes of what I hope to be called memeing around with Speedway memes. Um, Thank you to our first guest, of course, Mr. Spectacular Matthew O'Brien. Um, stay tuned, guys, because uh, we've got some more racing coming up. Uh, after this video is posted is National Sprint Car Title Week, and uh, I'm very excited for that. Are you excited to watch some sprint cars rip around the motorplex? Yeah, very excited. Um, incredible field. Saw the nominations the other day. 52 cars, I think it was. Unfortunately, I'm probably not going to get to see a whole bunch of racing because I'll be slinging some wet rags on the uh, on the W24 for Jack Williamson. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have our work cut out for us over the next sort of two weeks because he's also running the 360 state title uh, next Saturday at Bunbury. So, we uh, yeah, we've got our work cut out for us, but we're looking forward to it and, um, yeah, just ready to get stuck in. All right, thank you again, mate, and uh, we'll see everyone uh, next time we're at the track, which will be for the Perth Motorplex for Prelude Night.